Hello, in this video I'll be working through Unit 1 homework problems 27 through 46, and these problems deal with limits involving infinity. So the directions say to evaluate the limit, and then determine what that says about the existence of a vertical or horizontal asymptote. So number 27, we want the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 minus x over x minus 2. I'm going to start this one the long way and then we can talk about the shortcut. So I'm going to rewrite this rational expression by dividing each term by the highest power of x. So looking at the expression, the highest power of x is just x, or x to the power 1. So I'm going to divide each term by x. So 1 divided by x is 1 over x, minus x divided by x is 1, over x divided by x is 1, minus 2 divided by x is 2 over x. And now I'm going to evaluate this limit using substitution. So I have 1 over infinity minus 1 over 1 minus 2 over infinity. 1 over infinity approaches 0. Okay, so this is going to be 0 minus 1 over 1 minus, and 2 over infinity also is approaching 0. Okay, so now I have negative 1 in the numerator, 1 in the denominator, so my limit is negative 1. And let's talk for a moment about the shortcut. So when I have a rational expression like this and I'm taking the limit as x approaches infinity or as x approaches negative infinity, I can look at the degree of the leading terms. So in the numerator, the leading term is negative x. In the denominator, the leading term is x. They both have the same degree, and when they have the same degree, it is the coefficients of those leading terms that are going to determine my limit. So I take the ratio of the leading coefficients. In the numerator, the leading coefficient is negative 1. In the denominator, the leading coefficient is positive 1. And that ratio, negative 1 over 1, is negative 1, so that's my limit. Now what does this say about the existence of a vertical or horizontal asymptote? Well, the limit as x approaches infinity is negative 1. So if we think about this graphically, as x approaches infinity, meaning as we're looking at the far right-hand side of the graph, the y values are getting closer and closer and closer to negative 1. So if that's negative 1, our y values are just getting closer and closer and closer to negative 1. So this is a horizontal asymptote. There's a horizontal asymptote at y equals negative 1. When you describe a horizontal asymptote, it is a line. So we want to give the equation of that line. Don't just write asymptote, horizontal asymptote at negative 1. It's at y equals negative 1. Okay, number 28, we want the limit as x approaches negative infinity of x plus 1 over x squared plus 1. Okay, so I can approach this algebraically the same way I did in the previous problem. Divide each term by the highest power of x. In this case, the highest power of x is x squared. If I divide each term by x squared, I get x over x squared, and that simplifies to 1 over x, plus and I have 1 divided by x squared over, and then x squared divided by x squared is 1, plus, and then 1 divided by x squared. So now using substitution, I have 1 over negative infinity, I drop my negative here, plus 1 over negative infinity times negative infinity is positive infinity, over 1 plus 1 over negative infinity times negative infinity is positive infinity. Okay, so negative 1 over infinity is approaching 0. 1 over infinity is approaching 0. 1 over infinity is approaching 0. So I have 0 in the numerator, 1 in the denominator. 0 divided by 1 is 0. That's a finite value, so my limit is 0. And this means that I have a horizontal asymptote. As x is approaching negative infinity, y is approaching 0. y is getting closer and closer to this limiting value of 0. So there is a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. Now I could have used a shortcut here as well 
by comparing the degrees of the leading terms. So the leading term in the numerator is x, the leading term in the denominator is x squared. It's degree 1 on top, degree 2 on bottom. Since the degree on bottom is larger, it tells me that the denominator is growing at a much faster rate than the numerator. And in a fraction, if your denominator is larger than your numerator, overall that's a small value. It has a small value. So if our denominator is growing at a faster, faster, faster rate than the numerator, then the limit is always going to approach zero. So without doing any of this algebraic work, I can look at this and know that the limit is zero since the degree on the denominator is larger than the degree in the numerator. Now that only works as x is approaching infinity or negative infinity. So be careful about using those shortcuts. Number 29, we want the limit as x approaches negative infinity, 2x cubed plus 1 over 3x squared plus 1. So I will start this one the long way, limit as x approaches negative infinity, and then I'm going to rewrite this rational expression, dividing everything by the highest power of x. So I'm going to divide everything by x cubed. 2x cubed divided by x cubed is 2. 1 divided by x cubed, 1 over x cubed. In the denominator, 3x squared divided by x cubed is 3 over x, and 1 divided by x cubed is 1 over x cubed. Now using substitution, this gives 1 plus 1 over negative infinity cubed is still negative infinity, and then 3 over negative infinity plus 1 over negative infinity. So 2 plus negative 1 over infinity approaches 0. So 2 plus 0 over, and then denominator, 3 over negative infinity approaches 0. 1 over negative infinity approaches 0. So I have 2 over 0. Now 2 over 0 is undefined. This is not equal to 0. This is undefined. And we're taking a finite value and dividing it by a number that's approaching 0. So this is going to equal positive or negative infinity depending on whether our numerator and denominator are positive or negative. And if we think about the original expression, if we're approaching negative infinity, the numerator is going to be negative. The denominator, since we have x squared, is going to be positive. When we have a negative divided by a positive, we get a negative. So this is approaching negative infinity. I shouldn't really say it it's equal to negative infinity, but it's approaching negative infinity, and therefore the limit does not exist. So we were looking for the limit as x approaches negative infinity. We did not get a finite limit, and that means there is no horizontal asymptote. So no horizontal asymptote for this one. Now I could have used that shortcut here as well. The shortcut, remember, it applies when you're taking the limit as x approaches infinity or negative infinity and you have a rational function. So it's pretty limited as to when you can use that shortcut. I'd rather just work things out the long way. Um, but we could use the shortcut here if we notice that the numerator has degree 3, the denominator has degree 2. Since the degree in the numerator is larger, I know that the numerator is growing at a faster rate than the denominator. And in a fraction, if your numerator is growing at a faster rate than your denominator, then overall that value is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And when I say bigger, I'm sort of just ignoring that um, positive or negative for right now, and I'm thinking about just the magnitude. And that tells me that this function is unbounded. It's just going to be getting larger and larger and larger, or if it's negative, smaller and smaller and smaller. And we can determine the sign just by thinking about whether the numerator and denominator are positive or negative. X is approaching negative infinity. We have degree 3 on top, so numerator is negative. We have degree 2 on bottom, so denominator is positive. Negative over positive is negative. So I know this one does not have a horizontal asymptote, and the limit does not exist. Number 30, we want the limit as x approaches 2 from the left-hand side. So we will not be able to use the shortcut on this one since we're approaching a finite value. I'm just going to start with substitution. I'm going to substitute 2 in for x. So that would be 2 over 2 minus 2, which is 2 over 0. 2 over 0 is undefined. 2 over 0 does not equal 0. It's undefined. 
it does not have a finite value. It's either going to approach infinity or negative infinity. Again, depending on whether the numerator and denominators are positive or negative. So if we think about this a little further, we're approaching 2 from the left-hand side. So I'm going to put a little 2 from the left-hand side mark here. And that means this number is actually a little bit less than 2. So I have a number that's less than 2, and I'm subtracting 2 from it. Overall, that's going to be negative. So I'm going to put a little negative sign here to indicate, yes, it's approaching 0, but it's approaching 0 from the left-hand side, so it's negative. The numerator is positive. The denominator is negative. So this is approaching negative infinity. My limit does not exist. I took the limit as x approached a finite value, and I got an infinite limit. And that tells me that there is a vertical asymptote at 2. So vertical asymptote at x equals 2. And again, a vertical asymptote is a line. So I'm not going to write vertical asymptote at 2. I'm going to say at x equals 2. Give the equation of that line. Number 31, find the limit as x approaches infinity of the natural log of x plus 1. So using substitution would give the natural log of infinity plus 1. Infinity plus 1 is still infinity. Natural log of infinity. Well, the easiest way to figure that out, I think, is to visualize the graph. So the natural log graph it looks something like this, right? We've got a vertical asymptote right here at 0. And as x approaches infinity, that y value is just continuously growing. It's growing very slowly, but it is growing. So this limit is infinite. Okay, that limit does not exist. And we took the limit as we were approaching infinity. The value is not finite, so no horizontal asymptote. Number 32, find the limit as x approaches 0 of the natural log of x plus 1. Using substitution would give natural log of 0 plus 1 is 1, and the natural log of 1 is 0. That's a finite value, so that's my limit, 0. I took the limit as x approaches a finite value, and I got a finite value. So this tells me nothing about the existence of a vertical or horizontal asymptote. I, the most I can say is that there's not a vertical asymptote at x equals 0. And actually, that reminds me, I should have been a little more careful with number 31. Um, when I said there was no horizontal asymptote, we did evaluate the limit as x approaches infinity. But to, to say for sure that there's no horizontal asymptote, really, we need to check on both sides. We would have to find the limit as x approaches infinity and the limit as x approaches negative infinity to rule out the possibility of horizontal asymptotes altogether. Uh, but very quickly, even in just thinking about the graph, um, I can't approach negative infinity because of the domain restriction on my graph here. So it is true that there's no horizontal asymptote, but I was a little bit hasty in jumping to that conclusion. All right, number 33. We want the limit as x approaches negative 1 from the right-hand side. So let's try substitution. Natural log of negative 1 plus 1. That's the natural log of 0. Now, the natural log of 0 is undefined. 0 is not part of the domain for our natural log function. So let's think about this graphically. And I've already sketched the graph above. We are approaching negative 1 from the right-hand side. So numbers like negative 0.99999. When we add 1 to it, it's going to be slightly positive. I don't know if slightly positive even makes sense, if it's positive or it's not positive, right? But it's going to be positive, and it's going to be a really tiny number. So close to 0, but on the right-hand side of 0. So we're talking about this part of the graph here. We're getting closer and closer and closer to the natural log of 0 from the right-hand side. And so that is going to be approaching negative infinity. That's approaching negative infinity. So that limit does not exist. Now from that, we can conclude that there's a vertical asymptote. Right? We're taking the limit as x approaches a finite value, and we're getting an infinite limit. So that means that there is a vertical asymptote at the value we were approaching.
So at x equals negative 1. And let me just point out um, the graph that I sketched here was for natural log of x, not for the natural log of x plus 1. Because I was using the graph to, to try and evaluate these expressions here. And these are in the form of the natural log of a single value. So I was using the natural log of x function to think about that. If we talk about the graph of natural log of x plus 1, that would just shift everything to the left one. So that's why that new vertical asymptote would be at x equals negative 1 rather than at x equals 0. Hopefully that made sense. Number 34, we want the limit as x approaches negative 3 from the right-hand side. So let's start with substitution. I'm substituting negative 3 in for the x. So get negative 3 over negative 3 plus 3. And that simplifies to negative 3 over 0. So that is not a finite value. It's either positive or negative infinity. Let's think about the signs. The numerator is negative for sure. So negative 3, whether we are approaching negative 3 from the left side or the right side, we are still have a negative value. So numerator is negative. And the denominator is 0. But are we approaching that from the left or the right? Well, we're approaching negative 3 from the right-hand side. So numbers like negative 2.99999. We're adding 3 to that. So overall, that's going to be positive. So yes, we're approaching 0, but we're approaching it from the right-hand side. So we have a negative over a positive, And that is going to be negative. So this value is approaching negative infinity. And that tells me that my limit does not exist. So we're finding the limit as x approaches a finite value, and we're getting an infinite limit. And that definitely means we have a vertical asymptote. So a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 3. Number 35, the limit as x approaches infinity of 3x minus 2 over the square root of 2x squared plus 1. If we try to evaluate this using substitution, x is approaching infinity. So we might want to say 3 times infinity minus 2 over the square root of 2 times infinity squared plus 1. Now it looks as though I'm treating infinity as though it were a real number, and we know that it's not. So this infinity symbol is really just taking the place of a really large x value, something that's getting larger and larger without bound. So 3 times really, really big x value, still really, really big x value. If you subtract 2, you still have a really, really big x value. Okay, So 3 times infinity minus 2, we're going to say, still is an infinitely large x value. And then in the denominator, infinity squared, that's still a, just a really, really large value of x, times 2, still a really, really large value of x, plus 1, still a really, really large value of x. The square root of a really, really, really large x value is still a really large x value. Okay, So we're getting this infinity over infinity, infinitely large x value over an infinitely large x value. Well, what is that equal to? Is it equal to 1? Is it equal to infinity? Is it undefined, not exist? This is an indeterminate form. We really don't know what this means about our limit without doing some further analysis. So this is not a good way to approach this problem. Instead, let's go back to our rational expression here and think about how quickly the numerator is changing in relation to the denominator. So we can sort of use that shortcut we were using for um, rational functions earlier. Our numerator is linear, 3x minus 2. That's a linear function. It's degree 1. My leading term here is 3x. Degree 1, leading coefficient is 3. The denominator, not quite so straightforward. It isn't linear, so it's not even polynomial. So it we don't know what to say about the degree exactly, except that it's it's definitely not 2. We're taking the square root of 2x squared plus 1. The 2x squared plus 1 part is degree 2, but then we're taking the square root of that. So if you take the square root of degree 2, hopefully it, it makes sense that we're going to end up with something that's degree 1-ish. I can't really call it degree 1 since this is not a polynomial. Um, but degree 1-ish. So I have degree 1 over degree 1-ish. They have the same degree, so they're 
in relation to one another, they're sort of changing at the same rate, except we need to look at those leading coefficients because that can affect how quickly they're changing in relationship to each other. So leading coefficient of three in the numerator, leading coefficient of square root of two in the denominator. Now the plus one here is insignificant. When we're dealing with infinitely large values of x, adding one is not gonna have a significant effect on the value. Same thing in our numerator here, this minus two at the end, insignificant. We're only really looking at those leading terms. Those are, are what are gonna contribute the most significantly to the value of this fraction. So if we compare, since they have same degree-ish, we're just gonna compare those leading coefficients and we get three over square root of two. So that is our limit for number 35. Number 36, same problem, except we're taking the limit as we approach negative infinity. So degree one in the numerator, degree one-ish in the denominator, we're gonna look at those leading coefficients and we get three over the square root of two, but we need to be careful here and make sure we're using the right sign. As x approaches negative infinity, 3x minus 2 approaches negative infinity. The numerator is negative. If we're using a really small value of x, like negative a million times 3 minus 2, that is a negative value overall. So our numerator is negative. In the denominator, we're approaching negative infinity, but we're squaring that value. So it becomes positive, multiplying by 2, taking the square root, so we end up with a positive denominator. Okay, so here our limit is gonna be negative three over square root of two. Number 37, limit as x approaches infinity, x squared plus two x over the square root of three x squared plus two. For this problem, we have degree two in the numerator, and we have degree one-ish in the denominator. The numerator has a larger degree, it's growing much faster, than the denominator. So this limit is just approaching infinity. We should be careful about our signs. Always check that. So x is approaching positive infinity. Numerator is positive. Denominator is positive. So yes, this limit does approach infinity. Or we can say limit does not exist. Number 38, same function, but now we're approaching negative infinity. So in our numerator, we have degree 2 denominator degree one ish so our numerator is growing at a faster rate as compared to our denominator and if we substitute negative infinity in for x and of course by that I just mean a very small negative number like negative a billion when we square that add 2x it's going to be positive so we have a positive numerator it's infinitely large. The denominator, we have also a positive, infinitely large value. So positive over positive is going to be positive. This is approaching infinity. Numerator is growing faster than the denominator, um, and it's infinitely large. So approaching infinity, or again, we can say it does not exist. Number 39, limit as x approaches negative infinity of negative 0.4 to the x minus 4. So I'm going to substitute negative infinity in for x, and I get negative 0 0.4 to the power negative infinity, and then minus 4. With a negative exponent, we know we can rewrite that as the reciprocal with a positive exponent. So we have negative 1 over 0 0.4 to the power infinity, and then minus 4. 0.4 to the power infinity is approaching 0. Okay, so that gives negative 1 over 0 minus 4. Negative 1 over 0 is approaching negative infinity. So this is just going towards negative infinity. Limit does not exist. Number 40, limit as x approaches positive infinity of that same function. 
So negative 0 0.4 to the power infinity minus 4. Well, 0 0.4 to the power infinity is approaching 0. So substitution is giving me 0 minus 4 or negative 4. That is a finite value. So my limit does exist. The limit is negative 4. Number 41, limit as x approaches infinity, 2 thirds to the negative x minus 1 minus 2. So let's try substitution. 2 thirds to the negative infinity minus 1. Negative infinity minus 1 is still negative infinity. And then minus 2. I'm going to rewrite that so that I don't have a negative exponent. It's just a little bit easier to understand. So I can take the reciprocal and then use the positive exponent. So it'd be 3 over 2 to the power infinity minus 2. Now 3 over 2 is bigger than 1. And when you take a number larger than 1, multiply it by itself over and over and over and over again, and that's going to approach infinity. Infinity minus 2, I'm still going to approach infinity. So here, limit does not exist. 42, limit as x approaches infinity of negative 2 thirds to the negative x plus 2 plus 3. So let's do substitution, negative 2 thirds to the negative infinity plus 2. Negative infinity plus 2 is still negative infinity. And then plus 3. Okay, and I'm going to rewrite that so that I don't have a negative exponent. It's negative, then 3 over 2 to the power infinity, plus 3. 3 over 2 larger than 1. So when I multiply that by itself over and over and over again, that's going to get infinitely large. So now I have negative infinity. Plus 3 is still negative infinity, so that limit does not exist. 43, limit as x approaches infinity of 2 to the negative x minus 1 plus 2. Okay, so I'm going to use substitution. 2 to the negative infinity minus 1 plus 2. And that's going to be negative infinity minus 1 is still negative infinity. 2 to the negative infinity is 1 over 2 to the positive infinity, or we could say 1 half to the power infinity, plus 2. 1 over infinity plus 2, it's going to be 0 plus 2, or 2. So that limit is finite, it's equal to 2. 44, limit as x approaches negative infinity of e to the negative x minus 1 plus 2. So e to the negative negative infinity, that double negative is going to make it positive, minus 1, infinity minus 1 is still infinity, plus 2. e to the power infinity is infinity. Remember, e is just a number, 2.72-ish. Since it's larger than 1, um, raising to the power infinity is just going to make it larger and larger and larger and larger. So we have infinity plus 2. That's infinity, so that limit does not exist. 45, limit as x approaches 3, e to the 2 minus x plus 2. Substitution gives e to the 2 minus 3 plus 2, or e to the negative 1 plus 2, or 1 over e plus 2. That is a finite value, so our limit is 1 over e plus 2. And number 46, limit as x approaches negative 2. Let's do substitution. So 1 half to the power negative negative 2 minus 3 plus 3, or 1 half to the power negative 1 plus 3. Let's make that a positive exponent. So 2 to the power positive 1 plus 3 gives 5. So our limit there is 5.